what's up guys technical stinkers here back at you checking in on the 3d print operation if you're unfamiliar i'm a small business owner but i'm looking to get into 3d printing if i can scale it up here at home then i can move it over into my warehouse because my current business has nothing to do with 3d printing i'm a total novice at this and this is just exhibition so if you want to follow along in this process give me some pointers along the way give me your thoughts and feedback i'd love to have you be sure to subscribe to the channel so what have i got going on today all my cobras up here are all tasked on something right here i've got a desiccant box uh, so put some silica beads in, got a grinder going up here, or a big one, like an herb grinder. Same thing over here, trying to burn up the rest of these small spools, uh, doing it in some of these silk PLAs. Got another little boy atomic bomb going here on the A1 because I pulled off three this morning and the supports were just, they were all mangled together and it ended up damaging the model. So I'm trying this one with regular supports instead of organics to see if it comes out. It's looking promising, so hopefully that turns out all right. Over here on the Soval, we did complete silver silk PLA. It burned up the whole spool. Uh, I've yet to take it off. I was kind of waiting for this midday check of the video. Let's we'll see if we can get it to pop, pop, or run, pop off without damaging this thing. Now, I'm going to do another one of these. I think I'm going to run it in just standard PLA uh, with the inside-outside perimeter configuration because... I've just been running default. I didn't even know you could specify it to do uh, inside, outside, because on the overhangs, I get this kind of thing, the stringing here where it's not quite adhering. And so I'm gonna run inside, outside, see if that makes a bit of a difference. I think I can still clean this up and make it perfectly sellable. And down here on the P1P, we were printing this this morning. This is a kind of a concept. This is a not a, like a production or sale ready. I kind of wanted to just print this to see how it would come out, to check the like thicknesses and the how it would look and if there would be bleed through and stuff like that. Uh, this is a, I mean, you can kind of tell what it is. It's kind of like a wall placard sort of dealie. I paid for this design and I had to do some work to the file and it actually came out pretty cool. I mean, obviously you've got to clean up the colors. Maybe the yellow is not gonna work. Maybe just the background in black and then we do this banner thing and something else. But that's a pretty cool looking design to be honest it's a lot cooler now that i see it uh so i'll probably continue to play around with that kind of look around on the model obviously you know it didn't extrude down here kind of do some like different contrasting work in the painting and obviously because it's black back and yellow on this it shows through you can kind of just do the contrast with the fleur-de-lis on the edges but uh snake looks good it looks like a snake it's got a white belly i could probably maybe do a darker brown there but what I wanna do is paint it in a way to where if I wanna change the color of like say the snake, the snake color doesn't appear anywhere else and that way I can just swap it out in the AMS and print it and then it's easy to do that from there uh, so I don't have to repaint it because once this thing is painted, it does not get repainted, period. Period, amen, because it is so hard to paint this. But yeah, pretty cool looking model. That's the midday update. I'll kick it over to my future self to see what turned out, what happened in the course of the evening and what I'm printing tomorrow morning. All right, so it is the next morning. Let's check in and see what came out up here on the Cobras. We've got our, this is a desiccant tray to put silica beads in. I'm gonna put this in the bottom of my, uh, my bin down there of my already open spools of filament. So I was printing this kind of low and slow. No supports, came out pretty good. I mean, it's obviously, if this shouldn't have needed supports anyway. Uh, but everything came out pretty good. Hook over here on Cobra 4. Nothing on 1, 2, or 3. We already took those off. Over here on the Soval, uh, I wanted to print more D20 cubes in the standard size, if you've been following. Uh, I got one up on the Etsy. It's a stone finish. But I wanted to do some of the D20s in regular colors and charge a little bit less because, you know, they're kind of smaller than what the Cobras can do. So I was looking around for spools of filament that I had at least, what, 900 grams of. That's what about what this takes. Uh, but playing around with settings a little bit because yesterday I was kind of talking about how the, I was getting some stringing. And so on this version, not string, but like where the outer perimeter, the outer wall, kind of falls off on those, you know, sort of steep overhangs. They're steep, but not steep enough to where they need supports. And so someone was saying, someone told me to do uh, outside, inside, and that's the default. And that didn't make sense to me. So I was like, you, do you mean inside, outside? I didn't even know that was a setting. So I switched it around. I'm doing inside, outside. 
because I figured it would have more stuff to stick to, and it seems to be coming out great. I also did fuzzy skin, which I've never done before, and I'm really liking the result. This fuzzy skin is looking great. Um, you know, it looks, it's just an even finish all the way around. I know it's meant to hide the layer lines, but I'm really digging it, and it's coming out pretty good. I'm not seeing any of that previous issue here along the bottom. Uh, the numbers look okay, so you know, I'm gonna let it go, although I am getting a little nervous because this is showing I got about 200 grams left, so to speak, based on the scale on the, on the cardboard spool. Uh, you know, and this was kinda somewhat full in the beginning, so I'm hopeful it's gonna work out because you know, if it doesn't, then I'm not gonna leave this in this state for two days while I wait on another batch to come in and then it's kind of like a little different. So cross your fingers there. Over here on the A1, got an order last night, four fan shrouds. Haven't seen an order for those in some time. This is actually, this should be done any second. Uh, well, 22 minutes. How is that 22 minutes? That's like basically at the end. But we're gonna fill that, ship that off. P1's quiet, so let's go take a look again at the uh, the placard that we did. Also, we were able to get one of the models up on the Etsy yesterday, uh, so I got I kind of brought all the things out that I need to add to the Etsy. So here's the silver D20, the little boy atomic bombs, the hollow point, uh, some of these character models. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on my Etsy. I'm gonna put everything on my Etsy. I know you're supposed to stick to one concept or but whatever. Who cares? And then here's the little placard. So looking at this a little deeper, and when I printed this thing, it wasn't meant to be like anything close to finish. I just really wanted to see how it, like I get a basic idea of it, uh, to see how thick it was, how rigid, if I need to like, you know, do um, a finer layer height or thicker, you know, infill. I mean, it's basically solid infill. I'll probably print the final ones in completely solid infill. Uh, but just get an idea of colors too, because you can see here, you know, this has a black back because when you color the face, this yellow, the black shows through. And so what I've been doing is kind of adjusting the painting, cleaning up a lot of the edges because this thing has like a billion faces. So using just that fill tool in bamboo doesn't really work because everything's so connected. You try to fill one area, it'll just fill everything and it won't do anything. You'll have to do all this hand touch up. So for me, it just makes sense to do it by hand straight away, like from the get go. But otherwise, it, I mean, it looks like it's supposed to look, I mean, you get, you know what you, you see what it is, blah, 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 blah. You understand what it is, a snake wrapped around a gun that says don't tread on me. So going to be continuing painting on that. I've got maybe like two hours of painting already into the final version. Uh, so I think it's going to come out pretty cool. I think it will be a nice little, uh, you know, gift for Christmas or people that are into, you know, personal property rights, gun rights, things like that, whatever. Um, I really like it. So that's a win. That again, just the concept. And then over here on the car, got the TPU pretty much dried out now. It's just, do I want to go through and print this, you know, my prototype shell in TPU, or do I want to get something a little closer to what it's going to be? The problem is, is I design in Tinkercad. I don't, I, you know, I, I've done uh, Shaper and a couple other programs, but like Tinkercad is so much faster. I understand it's very, very limited in what it can do, but it is fast. Um, Cause basically what, how I design is I, I take a block and then start deleting every part that isn't what I want. And deleting things in Tinkercad is very easy cause you just combine hollow uh, primitives with other primitives and that's what how you get it. But in other programs you have to do these extruding things and sliding things through and it's just it's done in a way that's kind of not intuitive to me uh so learning that's like you know a whole beast in and of itself and learning software is bleh, boring but i do want to get something going for this remote control car i do want to do it in tpu if i could just like you know sort of use these holes and make like a shell it makes me think like should i invest in a 3d scanner let me know what you think in the comments below because what i could do is take the shell that's supposed to go on here scan it and then just print a, a replacement shell and then i could bolt on the pieces that i really need versus me trying to do this from the ground up because this is me you know i put it I, i've printed probably 10 of these where i'll print 
and then like, you know, just on the next version, make it like five millimeters deeper here, go up three millimeters there, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little cumbersome, it's a little tedious, and it's a little wasteful. The 3D Saga for today, always working on new stuff. Let me know what you think, what you think has potential in the comments below. Appreciate all the very, very positive feedback and all the, all the insight and ideas. Appreciate everyone watching me along in this journey. Again, if there's something uh, that you see that you want me to expand upon or elaborate on or yeah, suggestion for how I'm doing things here, again, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.